All right, so we're over here at my uh, Arbor Press. As you can see, this is orange in color. So this is an old Harbor Freight uh, Central Hydraulics one. I think now they uh, call it the Pittsburgh brand and it's uh, gray in color. One of the better uh, deals that Harbor Freight sells. So we're gonna go ahead and broach this baby. As you can see, we're just barely gonna make it down there at the bottom. <laughs> Biggest thing about broaching is obviously you want to make sure you start straight. You don't want to start going in at an angle and also it likes plenty of lube. So let me get the camera situated so you guys can see and we'll go ahead and make a square hole. Okay, I think I got you set up in a good spot. ahead and get some love potion number nine on her and as you can see each edge cuts just a little bit more than the previous one Do a little handheld there for you. Move you back. All right, so there you got it. We have us a square hole. Looks pretty good. Do a little test fit here. Three quarter inch ratchet. All righty. Fits like she should. Now, of course, you can do this several different ways. <clears throat> This is the way I chose um, because I've got a couple other projects that I need three quarter square holes, especially a repair on the Monarch. So that's why I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and buy the brooch. Now, you know, of course you could uh, just drill this like a three quarter inch hole. And then if you're ambitious and energetic, you can sit there and try to file the corners and try to get it right, which works that's a lot of filing and usually you know they don't look good and sometimes one corner's tighter or looser than the other and you're trying to tweak it and uh, you know I just wasn't going to go that route so originally what I was going to do is just take a square three-quarter socket you know turn it down and then press it into here that's what cam did and that'll work but like I said just decided to go ahead and buy the brooch <coughs> excuse me and then if you uh, are lucky to have an EDM or a friend with an EDM, then they can just, you know, burn one out and have you a nice square hole that way. So several different ways, but uh, we are good with the brooch. So now the plan is let's go ahead and get this back in the lathe. So now I can hold it with a bell center and we can just drive it with a three quarter inch drive. And I'll go ahead and skim this OD, get her cleaned up. And then we need to uh, drill a through hole and this piece will be done. Boy, is it a beautiful May day out here on the homestead. Just figured I'd give you a quick shot. Man, is it nice out here today. Finally, some good weather. And while you guys are enjoying the view, I can give a shout out to uh, my buddy Michael's little boy, Jeffrey. He's like my youngest viewer. <laughs> so, hey Jeffrey, I appreciate you being a subscriber and watching my YouTube videos. Hope you're doing well. All right, let's get back to the lathe. All right, guys, got you set up here, uh, up on the cross slide. Looks like it's gonna be a good shot. I added some extra lighting too. Got a bell center in, and I got a three quarter inch drive socket extension, basically driving this thing. Now, 
you know you can do it a couple different ways kind of like you know several ways to skin a cat I've got this uh, let me get out of the bag so you guys can see it so I've got this small little three jaw you know so I could put the th this little chuck inside the big chuck and then use the internal bore and you know grab it on these jaws spread the jaws out and do it that way but I just chose to do it this way this is fairly easy you don't have to worry about this chuck this big one's pretty good for a run out it hardly has any but you know ideally would be to put the four jaw on and then dial this in so she's running true and then put this in so a lot of work figure we'll just do it this way and uh, be done with it she seems to be running pretty good I need to take a little more, huh? So she cleaned up nicely. Sweet. Let's get over to the mill and uh, put a hole in her. So I got you over here at the surface plate. It doesn't have to be this accurate, but I figured I might as well use it since I got it. So I figured out where I need to be from the bottom up to the top. So I can put her hole. I'm just going to go ahead and mark it. Hopefully you guys can see that. There's my line. So coming from the bottom here, because we've got the bottom of this bore is three quarters of an inch. Actually, it's 0.747. So you got to start from here going up. And that's what I did because, you know, when we stick this sleeve on, she's sitting from here. We can't take it from here. Otherwise, the hole will be too low. So there she is. Let's get her in the mill find center and put a hole well sometimes work holding can be challenging and it can be challenging to open this box <laughs> alrighty so let's see here let's get this spacer here so this diameter is 2.929 just under 3 inches after we skimmed it Got a one, two, three block at the two inch mark. So basically we need to make up close to 929. And tell you what, let's do 800 thou and we'll do 120. So that gives us 920. That gives 9 thou short, maybe for clamping force. It's good to have all these little kits and blocks and whatever else in your arsenal get that below flush so she's good to go let's see how this works let me turn you around a little bit and we'll slide this in back there behind there looks like that might be too much let me see here Nah, that should hold her. So, what I'm gonna have to do, get you over here real quick. Got a jack under here. Thank goodness, um, the center line of this bore is above the jaws. So, you know, I don't need a V block. This will work, this will hold it. But we do have to run a through hole, so you can't put her in the vise. So, you gotta extend her all the way out. And this line, what we have to cut, is like almost in the center. <laughs> So uh, I got her about as close as I can get her for, uh, well, let me see if I can do this upside down. There you go. Let's try this. 
so that's about half right there so a little bit of end mill clearance about 300 thou or so all right let me uh find center i need to sweep this make sure obviously she's not tilted and i'll go from there So I did a 3 8 pilot hole and this is a 63-64 drill bit and we'll give it a shot. I hope I don't regret it. I'll try to take it slow. So just as I expected, originally I wanted to run an end mill through here, but I didn't have one long enough. That is in uh, one inch diameter. Because I was worried about once we get through this wall and we start to, you know, hit that wall on the inside, you got that radius and the drill bits trying to cut on the outside and it's pulling the, the work piece up. So this is a 7 8 I got a nice long one. It's new, Niagara. We'll run her through, and that should hopefully open up the hole enough. And then we'll try to uh, get the drill through. If that doesn't work, I guess worst case, we can, you know, rotate her. And I should be able to center up on the hole. So we'll give it a shot. Actually, let me move you for a better angle. All right, let's try this again. There's oil all over the lens. I'm glad I looked at the viewfinder. Got you clean so you can get a clear view. through no casualties sweet big old chip out the way Alright, check this fit out. Hopefully you guys can see it. This is a one inch shaft, piece of drill rod. Man, is she perfect. No wiggle at all. So um, instead of reinventing the wheel, we're going to do a change of plans here a little bit. I'm just going to use a piece of this drill rod. And we'll just cut her just a little bit under flush. And then we'll drill and tap it. So I think that's the plan instead of making that piece originally with a shoulder on one side. Since I've got it and it fits real good, now of course, ah, let me get her out. Had some rust on her, and I was over there cleaning it up on the wire wheel. Now the moment of truth is, well, they all line up, right? That's what we're waiting for. Hopefully, you can see that. So I made it so the hole was just a little bit proud up the top there, just to make sure, because if we cut it short, it wouldn't fit. So. I think we're gonna be good. Let's see if everything lines up. Let's see if I can get her started. <laughs> there we go. She's trying to go through. Wow. This is one heck of a fit. Oh boy.
Yep, she'll go. She's just a little bit sideways right now. Let me let me work on her with a BFH, and I will be right back. So I think we have a slight problem, and I don't think it is on my part. You know, because we found the center of this adapter here. But I'm thinking they did not run this hole in the center of the shaft. Kind of looking at it, it looks like it's just offset a hair. Obviously I can put it in the mill, center up on it, and then run an edge finder here and run an edge finder here. And then figure out if this hole was actually right in the center line. But I don't think it is. If you put it in here, because we're, we're good on this side, if I turn it over without losing it, you can see she is off on that side. So that's why the shaft is not going through. I mean, it'll go through here because we did it right. See? So we know we're good there. Alrighty, so let me think on this. I hate to have to kind of wobble something out, but that may be the only option we got. So just as I suspected, if you guys can see that, the hole was off. They didn't put it in the center line of that shaft. So it was off. You know, 108 thousandths divided by two, so you know, it's 54 thousandths off. So I didn't film it. What I just did is put it back over in the uh, mill, you know, moved it over 54 thousandths, and I ran a one inch end mill down and just kind of cut, you know, about half of this uh, circle there, this diameter, you know, all the way down through it. That worked. If you guys can see it, it is a seriously tight fit, but it's in there. So <laughs> that's what I get for trying to do a precision fit, right? All right, so I'm just going to uh, get this. Actually, I'll probably just go get, a, get this baby chucked up in the bandsaw. Cut the piece we need, and then we'll take it over to the lathe. And nothing fancy, just uh, drill and tap it. That's all we need for that. So now it's time to work on the other end of the uh, pinion gear. We need to turn this in uh, 5 eighths of an inch and the diameter needs to come down to 1.5. So easy. I think this is just uh, probably cheap steel and that's been chromed. Set some zeros here. Try to get you a better camera angle. Thirty thou. five to come out but then I want about a thou slip fit so 26 let's dial in 13 see what we get 6, 10, 11, 12, 13 
Oh yeah. For just what we needed. All right. So you can see there's a keyway in there. So all we need to do is cut a keyway right there. But before we do that, since I still got her in the lathe, let's go ahead and uh, drill and tap for, I guess, uh, I don't know, 3816 will be fine. That way we'll have a, a retainer to keep the wheel on. See if I can get you in there without having my big hands in the way. I haven't done much power tapping on the Monarch. It's not a problem on the Enco because you can stop her quick and reverse her over here. It's a little bit different, so I figured just might as well hand tap her. Not in a rush. quarter inch key see if I can do this with you guys in the way maybe not maybe uh, let me get out away from this quill yeah we're good Sweet. stainless steel paint or stainless steel impregnated paint I didn't bother showing uh, me cleaning this thing up nothing to it just wire wheeled it
Alrighty, what do you say we uh, get this thing together since all the parts are made? You know, I just buzz this little adapter holder thingamajig on the lathe. You know, just quick video clips, nothing to it. This is going to hold the hand wheel on. I already got the ram back in place. And a little on the fly engineering, which is always fun on these projects. So, this pin is such a tight fit that there was no need to drill and uh, tap a couple holes and then put the uh, you know retaining washers and a couple bolts in because this baby boo, excuse me because this puppy ain't going nowhere so let me slide her in and we're good on this end sweet I already cut a little piece of keyway so that's going to go in here and of course the keyway has got to be at five o'clock <laughs> instead of at 12. all right hold on let me get something to well i might be able to do it let me see if i got enough hands here uh, to um no i don't hang on all righty i just pulled this out and readjusted it off camera not bore you guys so let me get the key in get the hand wheel on and let's get this in here just using a regular cap head socket screw to hold it I looked to see if I had any button heads, but I didn't. I went to the hardware store. They didn't have any either, so this will just have to do. I don't think it's that ugly, but it'll work. And I already adjusted the drag on the ram or the rack, whichever you like to call it. That seems to work good. Let's get this puppy in so we can use the handle. Sweet. So, let's see, proof of concept. Let's get this big daddy in here. And what we can do is just run her up to where you want her. I'm trying to do this one handed. Let me get over here on this side. <laughs> there we go. You see? Nice ratcheting effect. I don't have anything to press, like I said. If we get down here, boink, any position you want, just click her, and then you can run her up. So, super cool. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this first project at the shop. If you have a, a smaller arbor press, like a one or two ton, obviously you can do the same mods. You don't have to add a hand wheel if you don't want to. And then, of course, you don't need to go probably three-quarter inch drive if you only have a one or two tonner. You can just go with a half inch drive ratchet, and that'd be a little bit cheaper. And if you uh, notice the legs and the stand that this thing is sitting on, this is one of my earlier projects. Go back and uh, check that out. I made it out of half inch plate steel. I'll also try to pin a, uh, a link to it in the comments. So. You guys can check that out if you want. But anyways, first project in the new shop. Is that awesome or what? So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll catch you on the next project. See you guys.